Okay, this is the second video for Bio 150 students, and we will be building on what we covered in the first video that introduced statistics to talk about how scientists use graphs to summarize and evaluate data. In the first video, we talked about an experiment designed to test the hypothesis that fertilizer would have an effect on tomato production. These are the data we collected, and then we used, um, when we used a statistical test on the data, we got a P of 0.02 which indicated that there was a significant effect of fertilizer on tomato production. And what you'll notice is that when you read scientific articles, the authors won't show you all of the data that they collected. Instead, they summarize their results and report the results of their statistical tests. So here is an example from a real article, and you can see here that the authors are describing in words the results that they got, and then they're giving you the p-values from the statistical test that they ran. So here's several examples of p-values. And then you'll also notice here, circled in blue, um, several references to figures or graphs summarizing their data. So for many people, it's easier to interpret experimental results when they're presented visually rather than just in sentences. So if we wanted to do that for our data that we collected, if we return to our example, um, the best graph to use for this data would be a bar graph. So just as with any other graph, our independent variable, or our treatments, um, go on the x-axis. So in this case, our fertilizer and control would be on the x-axis. And um, on the, our de dependent variable, the one we measured, or the number of tomatoes, goes on the y-axis. The height of our bar, um, in each case, corresponds to the mean or average of each treatment. So if we add in the bars here, the height of this control bar should be 21, because that was the mean that we calculated, and the height of this fertilizer bar should line up with 28 here on the y-axis, because it's the number, average number of tomatoes we had in our fertilizer treatment. Okay, so if we leave the graph like this, then we aren't really conveying any information about the variation in our measurements of tomato production um, to anyone that's looking at this graph that doesn't have access to all the data that we have on the left. So remember that the variation or the spread of the data within a treatment is just as important as the average um, in whatever treatment you're considering in determining whether differences are significant. So to add information about the variation in tomatoes produced within each of our treatments, um, we can calculate what is called the standard error of each data set. So standard error is just a measure of the precision of our data. So if there's a lot of variation in the data collected for a given treatment, then that means the precision of our measurements were low and the standard error would be high. You won't need to calculate standard error for this class, but if you want to know more about how to do that, this is a link to a useful short video that can tell you more. And what I'll do is I'll provide this link in the summary of the video on YouTube as well. So if, you, if you're interested in watching that, you can do that. So if we calculate standard error for each of our treatments, we get 2.02 and 1.66. So we can add this information to our graph to give our readers some kind of an idea of how much variation we have within our treatments. So to do this, we just want to add a vertical bar to the top um, of our control bar. So in, in here, this case, for the control, our standard error was 2.02. So we add this vertical bar here that has a height of 2.02 .02 units. And then we can add this cap to the top, which just defines where that line ends. And because we had variation both above and below the mean in this treatment, we want to make that bar extend in both directions. So we want to add another standard error bar of the same height, 2.02, .02, going below the bar. And then we can do the same thing for the fertilizer treatment. The standard error in this case was a little bit lower, so there was actually less spread in the fertilizer data. So we would just add a slightly shorter bar here to the top of the fertilizer bar. And again, we want to go below to show that the variation extended in both directions of the mean. Now, sometimes um, when you're reading papers, you will only see this bar extended in one direction, so above the bar. And if that's ever the case, you, can, you just know that they had variation around um, the mean in both directions. But sometimes authors don't include this lower half of the bar. Okay, so when we look at our graph, we can see that even though there is some variation in tomato number within each of our treatments, so here we have variation above and below our mean, same in the fertilizer, 
the magnitude of that variation is pretty small compared to the magnitude, the magnitude of the difference between the averages of our two treatments. Okay, so this confirms the result we ran with our statistical test, which found a significant difference between our treatments. We saw before that scientists often report their p-values in the text of the results section of articles, but they can also use notation on figures um, to let you know if treatments are significantly different or not. So to indicate to the reader that our p-value is less than, point of, um, less than 0.05 and that the difference between our treatments was significant, we can add a star to this graph. So here I'm just going to show the graph in isolation here. And if we add a star between these two bars, it indicates that the difference between those two treatments was significantly different, or p was less than 0.05. This means that anyone should be able to look at our graph without reading any other part of the results section and get all the information they need to determine whether a hypothesis was supported or not. Okay, so this is the kind of thing you will see in the paper that you read this semester. Now we have just worked through a pretty simple example that compared just two treatments, but you'll also read about studies, in fact you've already read about studies that compare more than two treatments. Uh, so let's, let's look at an example of this. Let's imagine that instead of just being interested in the effect of fertilizer on tomato production, we're interested in testing two different brands of fertilizer to see if one kind is more effective than the other. So the two brands that we've chosen are super tomato fertilizer and tomato plus fertilizer. Um, so in an experiment designed to answer this question, we would have two different fertilizer treatments, so super tomato and tomato plus, and a control group, so a group that does not get fertilized because we're, we still want to know whether either fertilizer works better than doing nothing at all. So just as before, we would randomly assign these treatments to the tomato plants, apply fertilizer where appropriate, and keep track of how many tomatoes are produced in each treatment. With this design, we can actually address two different hypotheses. So first, we can test whether fertilizer in general affects tomato production. So we can compare both of these fertilizer treatments to the control. And second, we can test whether different brands of fertilizer have different effects on tomato production. So when we go, um, so once we've carried out this experiment, when we go to graph our data, we would get um, a bar graph with three bars, one for our controls and one for each fertilizer brand. Okay, so here's our data that we collected. So again, you can see that the height of each of these bars is going to correspond with the mean tomato number that we measured in each treatment, and then we have some standard error variation around each of all the means in each of these treatments. So um, you can see that there appear to be some differences between these treatments, and we can use a statistical test, so in this case an ANOVA, to determine whether each of these treatments is significantly different from the other two. So when we do that, we, get, we can get a p-value for the comparison between each of these treatments. So that's what I'm showing you here on the right. In this case, what we find out is that some of the treatments were significantly different from one another, and others weren't. And we can tell this because some of our p-values are less than 0.05 and others aren't. So in, in situations like this, um, it's more complicated to convey all, all of this information with stars on graphs, so scientists will instead label the bars with letters to tell which effects are significant. And the basic idea is that any two bars with different letters are significantly different from one another, and any two bars that are labeled with the same letter are not significantly different from one another. Okay, so since our control treatment was significantly different from the super tomato fertilizer in terms of how many tomatoes were produced, we can tell that because we have um, P is 0.02 for that comparison, super tomato versus the control, then we know that we want to mark the bars on the graph with different letters. So we could give the control bar an A, and we would label the super tomato bar with a different letter, and the convention is to start with A and move up in the alphabet, so we would mark this with a B. Okay, so that tells the reader that there was a, a significant difference between those treatments. Uh, and then the number of tomatoes produced by plants fertilized with tomato plus fertilizer was also different from the control treatment. So we, here we had a P of 
So we know that we don't want to mark that bar with an A, since that's what we gave our control, but we need to know whether to give it the same or different letter as the super tomato bar. Since P, um, so we want to look at this second test in order to figure that out. And since P is greater than 0.05 for the comparison between the two fertilizer treatments, we know these aren't significantly different, so we should mark the tomato plus bar with a B to indicate that P was greater than 0.05. Okay, this way anyone should be able to look at our graph without reading any other part of the results and know exactly what we found, including whether it was statistically significant. All right, this is the end of the video, and I hope it will help you interpret the results that you read about in future scientific articles. And you will use this graph um, and the information contained in both of the videos that you've watched to answer the last two questions on your homework that are due this coming week.